to say. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Early. Yes. And uh, in this, this session, it's about the speed. You picked the title from Skoda to Ferrari. Yeah, I actually wanted Skoda to BMW, but uh, yeah. yes, it wasn't fast enough. I'm a big fan of Toyota, <laughs> but uh, but sometimes uh, speed is uh, what you need. Yeah. And uh, in PIMS, I think there's been quite some uh, development compared to what we have before. Like just like an example, we have uh, this total that we showed a little bit about uh, yesterday. There we had uh, 1.8 million documents, not all in the same database, but or much more than 1 million in one of the databases. And searching for documents there is uh, really nice and fast. I'm quite uh, impressed actually on how, how it looks like. <laughs> and I think our clients also are really happy with that. Of course, infrastructure might be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, what we do in uh, code of the web apps might be a part of it, and uh, database might be a part of it. We, yeah, we will learn more, more about that today. We have yeah. with us Leif Kåre, who uh, is working in the infrastructure team, Vidar, SQL guru, and uh, Marius, who knows quite a lot about uh, smart tricks in uh, when developing web apps and optimize them for speed. Yeah. So uh, first we'll start with uh, infrastructure. Do you have any advice, uh, Life Core, when it comes to what to do with the infrastructure to make sure it goes yes. like a Ferrari? <laughs> yeah, so uh, what uh, I would like to uh, talk about today is just some small uh, tips and tricks on how to get the best performance and the best practices for a uh, infrastructure setup for uh, PIPs. So uh, if we start with the uh, first slide, if you can Go one more, yes, the SQL Server settings. I guess the most important thing you can do on the SQL Server is to specify your maximum memory and to make sure you have enough for uh, OS and other services. Um, if you just give it everything the server has, you can actually uh, slow down the server because it will just take all resources from the server itself. Another uh, point you can do, uh, which is not best practice but it could be effective if you are running into issues and you don't have uh, more memory to add to the server or it's hard is to actually lock the pages in memory <clears throat> uh, what this means is that uh, you can tell the sql server that it will not be allowed <clears throat> sorry to uh, use the uh, page file on disk so normally the SQL server will use both the physical memory uh, and the page file on disk. But if you set that setting, it will disallow it from using the page file on disk, which is slower than the memory. But yeah, to be used with caution and only if you have a, a bad situation, I would say. Quick question around the mem memory. Is there any the guidance of how much memory on a PIMS database? Is there a rule of thumb with the sizes of the database versus memory? Uh, not really. It's more in terms of user and product. Um, yeah. What product he, the customer is using and the amount of user will normally determine the, the amount of memory you have. So not set formula, but uh, but you can uh, figure it out based on those two. Yeah. So uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we have the drives and importantly the tempdb, which might get overlooked uh, for some. Uh, you want to make sure you have high performance disks for your database files. You want to separate the uh, MDF, LDF and tempdb or on the, the master database, the log database and the tempd database on different drives optimally. And also for the tempdb, there are some backed best practices, which is <clears throat> you want one temp database per CPU core that you have available up to eight. And after that, you multiply by four for each of the cores afterwards. Um, 
you ideally want the auto growth in megabytes instead of percentage and to have a, a larger default database size than eight which is the standard on a, a sql server instance i would actually recommend setting it uh not as high as possible, but uh, like one gigabyte or something. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One gigabyte, I would say, is a nice setting, but definitely not the standard eight, because you will quickly run into uh, the auto growth situation if you have eight um, megabytes. And I guess the thing is also that uh, since most of our clients are running in the cloud, uh, we that are responsible for uh, delivering the product to the client. In many cases, we don't need to worry about this because you have full control of these kind of settings. Isn't that right? Yeah, these are standard uh, setup guidelines for the hosting team. So all yeah. uh, hosted solutions will have these uh, settings. That's good to know. Yep. OK, yes. Did you have more on infrastructure? Or? Yeah, just a couple of more. Uh, OK. Uh, we have some window settings we can do. Uh, the perform maintenance volume tasks bit of a not necessarily but can increase a bit performance it has to do with when the database increases in size uh, it will write zeros uh, on all the the space it claims but if you add the sql service account to this group policy it will not do this it will just write data on top of whatever is there um you might uh, want to exclude the database files from uh, antivirus and from the real-time scanning. We have seen some uh, antivirus uh, scans uh, almost uh, kneeling SQL servers because they can be quite aggressive if they are let loose. Uh, yeah, and uh, just in general, you want to account for spikes in CPU, not just the average. Uh, we have the FM task servers, for example, can consume quite a bit uh, CPU, uh, in, uh, not on the average, but it kind of bumps up and down since the timer runs on. You want the application pool always on and to have a scheduled recycling outside of business hours. So the uh, normal uh, setup in a hosted solution is to recycle it at three in the morning because uh, for most of the customers or almost all there are no users at that time so we also make sure we we adhere to the local time zone so it will always be 3 a.m for where the users are located and uh, yeah you want to scale the performance of the file store to the product and business usage so document control needs maybe uh, more performance for the file store lots of files going in and out but then risk and other modules they don't really care much for file store and yeah the next point might seem obvious to some but we have actually had some requests from customers where they would like to have the application server and the sql server on different continents bad idea that is likely just to kill the pimps all together and, and yeah, you would like the solution to be as close to the customer as possible, um, especially document management module, uh, as this will ensure good performance for the customer. Yeah, then because they're thinking about uh, downloading and uploading of files, that's why it could be smart to have it uh, closer. Yeah, yeah, it gives a it gives a good uh, experience for the end user. Yeah, and then of course that's uh, you have to kind of uh, balance that between having a centralized server and like in total where you have uh, uh, clients all over the world, we ended up with having three different data centers to have the best possible performance. But we see, for example, that from Brazil they use the Europe data center. Uh, yeah. And yeah. From uh, in the Asia, you could still use uh, Europe. So. Yeah. close uh, it could still be a continent between and could still give uh, very good performance yeah. and as all also uh, very much up to the the isp or the internet lines that the client has yeah. yes we, we see many has bad lines yeah bad yeah. lines bad performance and, uh, yeah. yeah so so the testing and the, the work, work that you did in total with lots of testing from all the different locations uh, against different uh, solutions. Hmm. That was a good. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, uh, yep. and then, yeah, thank you, uh, yeah, thank you, Life Core. Um, but uh, it's fair to say that uh, most of the times when we struggle with performance, uh, it's not really uh, Life Core we go to. <laughs> or we sometimes go there, but uh, we don't stop there because get that's redirected. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get redirected because that's normally not where the problems are. So we. We go to uh, to uh, Vida or we go to uh, Marius, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, right, slow performance on web app. Where where to start? Yes. Do you have a camera, Marius, so we can? Uh, uh... Uh, no, not really. Uh, right. So, and you can start by identifying. Um, long response times uh, by using inbuilt uh, browser's dev tool console that is accessible by f12 on your keyboard and <clears throat> you should navigate to network tab and there sh you shall see a waterfall graph so you should look for response of uh, longest execution time like like you see in the screenshot uh though there's not much you can do about it in front end alone it's a good hint to where you should start your improvement um, next slide um so and also why while, while you there in the network tab you should also uh check for redundant data source lo loading like you see here in in the screenshot uh, this happens when you have uh, master child links between uh, data sources and the child data source has not uh, 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 disabled auto load on it. So if there's any uh, reloading in your code, you, you will end up with this scenario. Um, OK, so I'll, I'll show you here a uh, simplified example of uh, recurring data source refresh. So let's say you have a simple function to copy a file uh, and use this um, procedure to, to copy it and uh, you want to reuse it and to, and to make it that copy all your files you have there. So just simply put it in the loop. So what you end, end up with is if every file you are calling a start procedure and on uh, its on success event, you are refreshing the data source. So for every file there you are refreshing again the same data source again and again and again so this this kind of uh, scenario should be avoided and usually in in the real world in the real cases uh, this is more complicated than just two functions uh, and and it has more levels in it and it's sometimes really hard to identify on this this kind of case okay next slide please um Right, so uh, what else you can do to increase the performance on your web app? You could start by minimizing the size of your web app. So uh, by simply making sm smaller functions, um, rule of a thumb, one function should do only one thing. Um, and uh, also try to use and reuse uh, code you have at your disposal, so use markups, functions, templates. There's no need to duplicate the code you already have. And uh, also um, keep your code clean, uh, get rid of garbage. Okay, next slide, please. Right, so when uh, coming to JavaScript performance, there are three strategies for improvement. Um, so do less comes to minimizing intricate uh, logic, uh, simplifying the functions and maybe using smarter algorithms. A good example for do it less often would be, let's say you have a page with, with a grid in it and you have a function to make the changes to the grid. So <clears throat> instead of addressing the grid on the page directly and making changes to it, you should uh, declare a uh, variable in it and assign the, the grid object to the variable and then you should make the changes to that uh, local variable in the function. So you're using cache instead of uh, uh, direct uh, addressing to the element. First, in, in, improve, improving the performance on of that function and <clears throat> do it faster basically goes down to do less and do it less often. So if you using these two strategies um, already, you all, you have the third one there. 
Okay, so next slide, please. Yeah, when talking about styling, uh, Bootstrap should be your go-to. It uh, can cover almost all your needs, and it's uh, being cached on 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 the initial loads. So, so it, uh, so you should should give a Bootstrap um, uh, priority. Uh, however, if you need your own styling for some reasons you should use uh, CSS uh, rule set instead of inline style especially if it's repeating inline style because um, the inline style is uh, rendered every time you load the page and, and it's hurting the performance so uh, here's some extras for you try having less data like uh, limiting the size of um, drop downs using paging in the grids uh, and load only re relevant data. Also, uh, sometimes uh, the separate site template, it's a valid option. Let's say you have an app that needs to display some graphs in it and in order for, for it to do it, you need some uh, scripts in it like you see added additional scripts in the screenshot. Uh, so uh, to not have those scripts uh, loaded for, for every app in, in the PIMS, you should you, you can move it to a separate template and use it for for, did, for this app uh, or s apps with similar content. OK, next one. And uh, another goal in performance to make it feel faster. And um, you can do it by uh, loading the data only of uh, uh, elements that are currently in display. Right, so next slide, please. Uh, and um, even that, you can load the da data asynchronously, reducing the initial loading time. Right, uh, carry on, please. Um, OK, so also don't forget about user experience. This is kind of important and is important, actually. Um, use, users need an indication that their action has been acknowledged. So using uh, toes, spinners and progress bar is a uh, good practice. <coughs> in cases, then uh, users can generate a lot of requests in short amount of time, like we have uh, commenting on, on review. So uh, some background processes can be utilized to reduce the amount of requests users are sending, thus minimizing the wait time for, for the users. And uh, we can also utilize uh, distributing the load to dedicated web servers on secondary tasks like downloading B files, creating zip archives. Uh, that would increase the overall performance on the main web server for, for other users. And uh, keep in mind that uh, having procedure calls and selections from data sources in the razor will increase the blank page time on initial loading. Please carry on. And uh, yeah, eventually it's all about <laughs> database. Yeah. And I think uh, just one thing first I want to mention this trick that uh, we do in the grid with asynchronous loading. That's something we see it in use, for example, in uh, Total, because that grid is being uh, used a lot every day by all the users. That's how they access the documents register. And uh, I think that really the way that that is implemented also with the async uh, loading of the grid, not only smart uh, database uh, queries, but the combination that really makes it feel uh, really uh, fast and responsive. Yeah. But then, so you tip, your first slide you had was about uh, checking the network tab in this uh, Chrome uh, debugger kind of thing. And that's where you really see typically where the problem lays, which is normally, or oh, yeah, that's at least my experience. The no, normally, it's all about the DB, as yeah. you say. There, there, you are find, so, yeah. there are so many, like Marius, you showed the small bits and pieces. Could be uh, those extra data sources being loaded, or uh, yeah. you have some, some functions duplication, or you have CSS caching. Um, there are small bits and pieces, and usually that doesn't break everything, right? It, it comes down to 
what the next and we that will go through the database but still mm. all those small bits and pieces are important and uh, especially for for the applications that are big yeah um good good okay Vida. yeah so basically then it's uh, all about uh, the base or the database um this is uh, when some people call me, but uh, in a lot of cases, it's the same thing over and over again. Um, like you only need one. Um, I click it just died. Uh, you only need one ATB or ATBX per AVIV, or if you're using ARPT. So typically, what I see is something like this, and um, you can see the code. Uh, I'm guessing. Yes. Um, with uh, red, I've marked uh, the V here, and uh, we're joining uh, three different ATBVs. And uh, not uh, all of you will know this, but um, the ones that have been in uh, in document uh, management, they know that in revisions ATBV, you're actually referring to the documents ATBV. So there's no point of having uh, these three ATBVs here which are again in the code behind them. They're referring to more or less each other. So keeping one of them will obviously uh, keep the security uh, checks and uh, that will be sufficient. But when you do this, make sure that you take the one that is the most critical. Because if you have like um, an HR, um, module and you use the ATBV for documents or whatever and then you're joining in the ATBL for a person's table to get some sensitive data and that's not uh, the way to do it. So make sure that you use the most sensitive ATBV and uh, all the rest can be ATBLs then. So that's uh, my number one tip uh, on, um, on uh, fixing performance. Uh, I still see this in um, in Westcon where, where I work and um, we have, uh, I think it's about uh, six or uh, 7,000 views at the moment. That's quite a lot. I haven't gone through all of them yet, but um, whenever I uh, come across uh, things like this, this is the first thing that I do. And that usually just fixes the the problem. And I uh, also, of course, it's extremely important that one really knows the security model. Uh, of course, you, should, you must of know course. that when you of deal course. with uh, AVIVs or creating anything in the database, because if you do something wrong here, you can, of course, this uh, mm, it's more. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, can. It's really important to to do this with care, but it's a really smart uh, thing, of course, to do. Yeah, if you do it right. Um, yeah, uh, I I don't think anyone should uh, make anything in the database. They can see things in the database, but do not make anything unless you're sure about how the security model works. So that's my uh, <clears throat> thought on that. My next one is uh, stop using scale valued functions. This is uh, something that we used to do a lot before, but uh, we've kind of uh, stopped uh, using them, but uh, we still have a lot of this one, for instance. Now this one isn't the worst, but there are some functions that uh, just shouldn't be used. And the general tip here is to not use scalar value functions. In SQL Server 2019, there's a new feature that supposedly we're going to help this. And yes, in some cases it helps, it makes them the code of this uh, function in line and that makes it so if you have this code inside of that uh, function this is not what's in the function but let's say that this was the function with just a return statement they would in sql server 2019 do the exact same and in 19 you could then utilize um, uh, multiple calls but in all of the SQL Server versions, you will not uh, be able to use more than one core if you're using any kind of scalar-valued function. Mm. So please don't use it. And even though they 
kind of fixed it in 2019. It's not really fixed. So we're running on 19 and we see that, uh, yes, we have a couple of functions that uh, that perform OK, but we also have two, 300 functions that are not performing OK. So uh, whenever possible, so please stop using that. My third uh, tip is um, stop using uh, at tables or declare uh, at table as table. This is um, one of the uh, biggest things that I see. Like all these things are um, the big things that I see when people are asking for uh, help with performance. Uh, and a hash table or a char table or uh, we just call it the temporary table, will always perform better than a at table. And this is just people are used to writing declare yada yada as table. Just spend five minutes, get used to the create table instead, and uh, you'll gain uh, performance. And the reason for this is that in SQL Server 2000, and, no, in SQL Server, um, the at table will always uh, estimate with or the stats of that doesn't exist, so it always thinks that you have one row in this table. So even if you're uh, like uh, doing uh, something for the how many documents did you have in to uh, total? 1.8 million. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so if you put those into that table, SQL Server still treats that table as if there were one row in that table. If you, on the other hand, do a create table with a temp table like that, it will do actual uh, statistics like on, uh, on proper table, uh, on proper tables. So then it will actually estimate with 1.8 uh, million rows or whatever. So these are the three things that I see over and over and over again, and those are the things that uh, will help you a lot. Of course, there are some things that uh, like you should uh, look at, uh, but when you've been struggling for like a month with the performance on a thing, uh, you normally call me or Ari uh, Löksson or something like that. And that's when you start looking at the, the extreme uh, details of it. But these three things are the most common things that uh, that I see. Okay, that uh, was very helpful. Yeah. Thank you, Vida, and thank you, Marius, and uh, Life Cora. And an important thing today, uh, the last session today, the finale. Then we are gonna have uh, we're gonna have the world <laughs> champion of uh, Apad. Yes. <laughs> so there will be a yes. kahoot. Yeah. Yeah. Prepare yes. yourself, everyone uh, listening to this one. Perhaps uh, you should uh, watch it again because there might be some of the tips uh, that was presented here that uh, appears in this kahoot. Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. And it's uh, never a thing in Omega without any competition. <laughs> and there might be some prizes. Oh, but, yes. Yeah. yeah. All, always a prize. Okay. Okay. Have a good, good day then. Yes. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. bye.